today on Talk It Out. Oh, do you ever go to rate my professor and look at what you have there? No. It's like, well, no, I'm not one of those people that lurks online. Yeah. <laughs> what are the latest ratings, right? But basically, they said, well, yeah, you should. They didn't say why, but so when I opened it up and looked, I realized at some point that year, students switched to gender feminine pronouns for me. And I never told them or asked them to do that. They just did it themselves. Hey guys, welcome back to Talk It Out. Today we're going to be discussing gender identity. And with there now being various descriptives of how people identify themselves, for example, gender fluid, transgender, gender non-conforming, for example, we at Talk It Out want to keep that dialogue going so we can contribute to more social awareness. And before we go around campus and hear what you guys have to say about the topic, we are so lucky to have a special guest with us today, Dr. Ramirez. Thank you so much for coming today. Dr. Ramirez is a biology professor here at LMU, and we just want to hear about your story and your journey that you've been through. I knew I was different in terms of gender a long time ago. Um, seventh or eighth grade, I found a biography of Christine Jorgensen, who was one of the first people to transition from male to female back in the yeah. 60s, you know, and there was a book and, you know, newspaper articles and stuff. So when I found that, I don't remember how I discovered this biography, it was in the local library, but, you know, I could recognize, like, whoa, this is me, you know. But basically, growing up poor, you know, there's never money to do or act on any of these things. My parents were conservative, Catholic, my dad was in the um, Army Corps of Engineers in World War II. So he was a master sergeant, so I was raised very much with kind of like, you know, da 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 place for everything, everything in its place, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you can show emotion and stuff like that. So, so I just learned to keep quiet about those kind of things because it wasn't really a supportive environment. But, you know, the reality is even if they'd been open to that kind of thing, there was no money to act on any of that. And, of course, this is long ago when there wasn't insurance coverage provided, you know? And if you're poor, you're barely lucky to have, you know? doctor coverage, you know? So, so I went through a lot of years just thinking that I'd never be able to act on this kind of thing. But, you know, at the same time, as that kind of video you saw showed, um, I had a bigger purpose in life for me, and that was to work for the success of women, underrepresented students, first-gen people. You know, because I didn't want other people coming after me to deal with the kind of stuff that I had to deal with. You know, that's negative cool. messages and that. So that's that's kind of what kept me going. In other words, I was never like unhappy, kind of dark and you know, sad and all that kind of stuff. Because I had a bigger purpose to live for, you know? And so, you know, when you see pictures 10 or 15 years ago when I was smiling and stuff, I mean, that isn't a lie. I mean, that's really true, right? What people didn't see long ago is that went to bed at night, you know, and you're by yourself, you kind of realize you weren't really being, you know, totally true. You know, I spent a lot of years encouraging people to be true to themselves, figure out their path in life, live their dreams and stuff. But, you know, at some point, it just became silly because it's like for all this encouragement I'm giving to other people, I'm not doing it myself in terms of being authentic. So, uh, so in any case, um, five years ago, I, you know, I came out on campus. Um, and, you know, gradually it was just a process to see how that process was going to go forward. So basically, I worked at five colleges and universities, so LMU is my fifth job. So during the 90s when I had these other jobs, so I worked at Pomona College, Bucknell University in Pennsylvania, Denison University in Ohio, in the Penn State system, and then I came here in 99. So during those years in the 90s, for seven years, I was totally open about my gender expression. You know, and, and basically these jobs weren't permanent, you know, so I didn't kind of really care what these people out there thought, because I was going to do my two or three years and I'd be gone, you know. But when I came to LMU, there was sort of this question in my mind, is how would, how would my being open about who I was play out, you know, in this Catholic setting, and you know, it's a long time ago, obviously, 15 years ago as in now, you know. So basically, I kept this secret for 11 years, you know. And so, by 2010, you know, sort of the, the, the sort of the, the personal toll that I think it takes on you to, like, know that you have this part of your life that you can't share. You know, it just got to be kind of too much. You know, I knew I had to do something. Um, 
You know, because if you look at national statistics, you see that the rate of depression, suicide attempts, and so forth is pretty high for, you know, transgender, gender non-conforming, any of those communities, you know? You know, I totally understand it, you know? There's a lot of, I mean, supportive people sometimes disappear in your life when you decide to do this kind of stuff. You're kind of doing it on your own. You know, there's workplace challenges, you know, you name it, right? So it's not uncommon for people to, you know, drift into that kind of stuff. So I knew I had to do something for me, otherwise it wasn't going to be a good, good outcome. So, and the surprising thing for me is that students were really some of the big proponents of support for me, you know, really quick, really early on. Um, during that first academic year, you know, which was 2010 and 11, and I was open about this, Somebody told me in spring semester, oh, do you ever go to rate my professor and look at what you have there? <laughs> no. It's like, well, no, I'm not one of those people that lurks online. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what are the latest ratings, right? But basically, they said, well, yeah, you should. They didn't say why. But So when I opened it up and looked, I realized at some point that year, students switched to gender feminine pronouns for me. And I never told them or asked them to do that. They just did it themselves, you know. So, so I think it was their sort of level of acceptance that, you know, to some extent brought along faculty and administrators and staff and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I never, in other words, if I was imagining negative, bad, you know, dire outcomes from me being open, it didn't really happen. It was totally surprising, like, oh my gosh, wow, you know. So basically for a lot of students it was kind of like, okay, yeah, you're, you know, you're doing this, okay, cool. It's like, what size are you? You know, <laughs> <laughs> people bring me stuff. You yeah. know, people's moms got involved. You know, like, oh, this is wow. my mom's closet here. I don't know if it'll fit, right? <laughs> One student a couple of years ago is moving out. Her and her housemates, they they filled like six trash bags of stuff. She came over on a Saturday. Hi, you need to come out to the car and help me. It's like, why? You'll see. So here we are bringing these trash bags in. Everybody put stuff into the bags. I don't know if it'll all fit. Whatever doesn't fit, take it to Goodwill. It's like, fine, cool, you know? No, that was just one example, you know? And so just people got really on board with it. So I was, like, totally surprised. I was curious to know, were you, yes. were you married at the time you came, um, you started to I am, I am, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's been sort of a challenge. Um, we're not going to stay together. We're splitting up, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, different people... Because again, if you look at the gamut of people's relationships, there are clearly situations where, in some cases, the person you're with can see that you're still the same values, the outlook, and all that kind of stuff. And they're not hung up by the presentation of you sort of physically, you know? And then there's other people that kind of get hung up on that kind of thing and can never move past it to some extent. And that's kind of my situation. How was that conversation initially to have that you were transforming? Well, she knew about this a long time ago. I mean, because wow. obviously I was married back in the 90s when I had these, you know, temporary jobs. We got married a month after. We were both LMU undergrads. So we were both biology majors. So we got married a month after graduation at Sanger and Oh, wow. So, so, you know, we went to grad school and, you know, to the same institution and so forth. So she knew about this, you know, for a long time, but... You know, I think she sort of thought that I would never act on this, you know, just because of finances and circumstances and all that. So, so as I said, in some cases when people act on it, you know, their partners can deal with it because they see that you're still the same person, you know, and there's other situations where that isn't the case, you know, and that's kind of my situation. In some cases, people in my situation try to, you know, convince, and, you know, let's do a media campaign, try to bring you over. You know, I mean, that's your choice, I guess, but to me it's kind of like, look, if I have to go negotiate with somebody, yeah. Yeah. it's like, exactly. no, you know, I mean, it's your choice, it's your life, you have to decide, you know, I have a path to pursue, and I'm going to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's amazing. Yeah. See, the other thing I think people should remember is that LMU, the administration here, they've been very open about what I've, my choice in life, right? So for example, I became director of the Office of Undergraduate Research in January of 14. So they knew full well that I was, you know, obviously, okay? So I did that job for three semesters. And when I stepped down from that job, I was hired for another position to be special assistant to the provost, okay? So again, they knew full well who I am, right? Okay, didn't stop me. 
The reason I mention that is you notice a couple of years ago there was this big controversy at LMU about the health policies at LMU covering, mm -hmm. you know, elective abortions yep. and things like that. You know, very quickly people realize that there's this, there are some of these off-campus groups of conservative LMU alums who think that LMU is kind of going down the tubes, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So some of those groups are always ready to pounce on LMU whenever they do anything that they don't consider to be okay. So I've had faculty colleagues here that have had people getting, you know, nasty calls, you know, faculty colleagues oh of mine gosh. from these off-campus groups. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's kind of scary, you know? Yeah. So as I said, LMU, at least the upper-level administration, they've been pushing me forward into leadership positions, knowing full well that if these outside groups, you know, chose to, they could come and make a big, you know, mess, whatever, you know, but they've been doing it anyway. So as I said, again, if you think, it was only like five years ago or so that the LGBT, you know, support services office mm -hmm. was formed, you know, LGBTSS, as you see. You know, and here we are five years later with people being willing to be publicly on, you know, posters mm -hmm. on campus, you know. And as I said, that's a very different circumstance than when I came to LMU back in 1999. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so I think society's changed, but this institution has also changed, I think. So. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We had so much fun, and yeah, it was so good, good hearing about your story. Now we're going to catch up with Sarah Litz, who's going around campus to hear what you guys have to say about the topic. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Stacy. I've gathered some students to get their perspectives on gender identity. Let's hear what they have to say. So how would you react if your son or daughter told you that they wanted to transition? If my son or daughter told me that they wanted to transition, I'd be open with it because I feel like in today's day and age, like everyone's more aware of different choices. People are born certain ways and that's how they would want to be. And I'm open to anything that my son or daughter or whoever he or she may be <laughs> would want to be. For me, it was it's it's not for me it would be it wouldn't be something that I would hope for honestly but uh it's something that I would understand and I would definitely support them in, in any way I could. Do you believe that those who identify as transgender are born feeling as though they are internally the opposite sex or do you see it as more of a choice? Um I'd say maybe not directly at birth but it's definitely something that's um it's not a choice that they would make. It's, it's not something that people would, you know, jump into to make their lives even harder like that. Honestly, it's like that, that, that part's really like hard for me like to understand. But yeah, I, I definitely feel like they do have a choice though. I definitely feel like they're born that way. I don't think it's something that they can change or something they have control over. It's just they grow to realize, hey, I'm not comfortable in my own body. So do you think gender should be more fluid to eliminate the various societal pressures? I think uh, fluid gender is like really important in this day and age. Even like going into college, they had those options available for you when you were selecting a dorm room. And I think it's really important because people do identify as both. Like there's so much in the media today, like Caitlyn Jenner, and you, you just, you have to be aware of those who want to be themselves and want to like identify as different things. You heard it here first. Back to you, Stacy. Thanks, Sarah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Talk It Out. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to Raw Studios. And we'll see you guys next time on Talk It Out. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.